All right, hello, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be working the, some really some extra examples about continuous functions, but it's also the solutions to CalVC homework 1.3. Okay, so the first question, maybe I'll slide it in there like that. Find the value of k that makes the function continuous. I'm gonna to have to use a calculator and I'm gonna to need to round to three decimal places, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set these two pieces of function equal to each other at the value x equals three. All right, so let's, let's get out of that. Right. So k to the three plus three equals 16 divided by k squared minus three. And, well, this is not the type of equation that we have much experience solving by hand. And I'll tell you, even if you tried to solve it by hand, it wouldn't go that well for you. So I'm going to multiply both sides by k squared minus 3. And that's going to be equal to 16. But since I'm going to have to solve this with a calculator, I'm going to subtract 16 and set it equal to 0. So that I can just you know, calculate the zero on the calculator rather than having to switch the window to include y equals 16 to look at two things running into each other. I don't, I don't really feel like doing that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to y equals, and it looks like I've still got some stuff in here from last year. Okay, I'm gonna type in, let's see, I can get that there. Okay, so I'm gonna say, I'm gonna use x for k. So k to the third plus three multiplied by k to the two minus 3 and then minus 16 and we're interested in where this is 0 okay I'm going to zoom to the standard window and I'm gonna wait for it to happen I've already done this problem yeah it's about 2 okay but you're not gonna report 2 that would not that would not be good enough right we're going to go right here to calculate because that's where a lot of the good stuff is okay. we're going to calculate a 0 Okay, you can select a point to the left of it, but I can tell that x equals one is to the left of that intercept. And I can also tell that x equals three is to the right of that intercept. Okay, you can give it a guess, that's not super important. And then I've got my answer, 2.081. Okay, I'll just write that. K equals 2.081. All right. The second one, find the values of a and b that make the function continuous. Um, okay, I was gonna say, is this the exact same question I just did in the notes? But no, it's not exactly the same, it might as well be. Okay, so I've got, you know, set the first two pieces equal to each other. I guess I'll, in case anybody doesn't have the copy of this set of problems. Okay, f of x is equal to x plus five, ax plus b, and x minus seven. Okay, and I'm gonna need to give some domain there. That's less than negative one, less than or equal to negative one, negative infinity, negative one. If you can't see that, I'll just scoot that down while I'm copying. Negative one to two, not including negative one, yes, including two, and then I guess two to infinity, not including two. Yeah, all right, so we just need to set these two equal to each other and plug in negative one. We need to set these two equal to each other and plug in two, and then we'll just solve the system. Okay. I think I need to zoom out. It feels like it's, yeah, I feel like my handwriting is taking up too much of the shot. That is so much better. Okay, so I'm going to start there. Maybe I'll switch to a different color pen. I'll say I've got x plus five equaling ax plus b with x equaling negative one. So that's negative one plus five is four equaling a negative a plus b. Okay. On the other hand, I've also got ax plus b equaling x minus seven at the point where x is equal to two. Okay, so that's two a plus b, two minus seven is negative five. So now I'm going to take these two and I'm going to solve this system. It's you know two equations in A and B both. So you know I think this is something that we can solve using techniques from our algebra classes. So I'm going to write them together. So maybe I'll actually write 2a plus b equals negative 5. And then I might want to multiply this equation by 2. 
And so then I would have negative 2a plus 2b equals 8. Okay. Add these two equations together, I'm going to get 3b equals 3. That means to me that b is equal to 1, and 4 equals negative a plus b. So negative something plus 1 equals 4. So I think, it, hold on. 2a plus 1 equals 5, uh, negative 5. So 2a equals negative 6, a equals negative 3. Okay. And that's how we did that one. I tried to do the mental algebra here, and I realized that's, whew, I don't know. Don't want to be wrong. I know I'd hear about it tomorrow. OK. For number 3, suppose the limit of g of x is equal to l. OK, so the limit x goes to a of g is equal to l. OK, where L is a real number, draw a picture to prove that each following statement is not necessarily true. OK, G of A exists. OK, well, I'm just going to keep going to this A L point. Um, the limit exists, but G of A does not need to exist for that limit to exist. We know that. OK, for B, G is continuous at x equals a. Well, I mean, if the limit exists, but there's a hole in the graph. Maybe I'll draw you a different picture, but it's the same idea. All right, right? That's discontinuous. Okay. Um, G of a is equal to L. Again. Hold on, was I supposed to just like draw one picture to disprove all of these? I'm not sure, I'm not remembering what I'm getting at here. Statements are not necessarily true. Oh, well I could say that G of A, we know that the limit is equal to L. All right, and maybe it just goes like that. It's kind of a weird function. But maybe G of A is elsewhere, right? G is increasing at X equals A. Well, couldn't it just decrease through that point? That limit exists. It's decreasing. Okay, not really sure. Maybe this was a, uh, maybe I tried to adapt this from a multiple choice question and don't think I really had success there. I don't really know what I was getting at. Okay, suppose f is a function with the properties listed in the table at right. De describe the values of a that make the statement true. All right, f is continuous at a, and now we're looking at a table that has the limit from the left, the limit from the right, and f of a. And oh wait, I can actually look at this. Yeah, this one right here, number four. But over here, yeah, f is continuous at a. That's where the limit is the same as the value of the function. That's x equals one. All right, so for a x equals 1. Okay, I hope if you're watching this video that you're not trying to cram all your answers in here on your homework. Uh, that's not going to be well received. I'll just tell you that right now. Um, you should know better than that by this point. Um, the limit of f of x exists, but f is not continuous. Okay, the limit exists because the limit from the left is equal to the limit from the right, but it's not equal to the value of the function, so it's not continuous. Okay, that's x equals 0. Okay. And then C, the limit as x approaches a of f of x does not be x equals negative 1 or a equals negative 1 because the limit from the left is not equal to the limit from the right. Okay. All right. This is another one of the, this type of question that I had one on the notes packet, but then it's like after I did it a couple times, it's not a good question. Okay, I disagree with it, but it did come from AP Classroom, so I do need to make you aware of it, right? Okay, the function f is continuous for all real numbers, and f is equivalent to x squared minus 4 divided by x plus 2, just as long as x is not negative 2. But really what this means is, okay, I'm out of room on that. Let me just draw here. f equals x squared minus 4 divided by x plus 2. Okay, well, this is x plus 2, x minus 2. 
divide by x plus 2, we're going to have some cancellation. And this is equal to y equals x minus 2. Okay, so we're pretty good at drawing that picture. Okay, except it's got a hole at x equals negative 2. Except if you go read, it's like, oh, it's a continuous function. So mm, joke's on you, I guess. It's not, there's not a hole. So if it's a continuous function, there can't be a hole there. And f of negative 2 is going to be negative 2 minus 2 more, which is going to be negative 4. Okay. I feel like this one's needlessly confusing. But nobody asked me. Find the value of k that makes f continuous for all real numbers. Okay, this is much more to the you know definition of continuity. I like what we're expecting in this class. So I've got f equaling x squared plus two and six x plus k for x less than or equal to three, x greater than three. So what we're going to do is we're going to set these two pieces of graph equal to each other at x equals three because we need to have the same y value at x equals 3. So x squared plus 2 is going to be 9 plus 2 equals 6 times 3 is 8 plus k. So I've got 11 equals 18 plus k. It feels to me like k is going to need to equal negative 7. All right, number 7, we're going to have to look at the picture of the graph. Where is h discontinuous? Okay, I'm going to say, okay, A is, I'm going to list out a set of X values where it's discontinuous, anywhere where there's a break in the graph. 3, 7, and 10. Okay, for B, what values of X is there a removable discontinuity? Okay, for the removable discontinuity, I'm going to say that's just a hole in the graph. So that's 3 and that's 10. x equals 3, x equals 10. And if they're going to ask about non-removable, that would be a jump discontinuity or a vertical asymptote. That's going to be x equals 7. Find all discontinuities of the function, determine if each discontinuity is removable or non-removable. All right. This is also a pretty classic type of question. Definitely a good quiz question. So f, the first one for a, f equals x to the 3 minus 2x to the 2 minus 3x. I'm just going to start by factoring it. x times, that'll be x minus 3x plus 1. Okay. And the denominator, I have another x to the 3. What? How am I supposed to factor this thing? How am I even supposed to know what the, the zeros of x to the 3 minus 3x three to the 2 plus 4? That's what I also stole from AP Classroom um, based on the, uh, you know, the appearance of the image. Okay, hold on. Okay, I'm going to switch this. I'm going to just change this problem so that it is 4x. Because maybe it was a typo. I was like, I don't know how you solve that one. Uh, that's beyond the factoring techniques that are required for this course. So I'm just going to say, we're not going to do that here. Okay, This is going to be x, x minus 3, x plus 1, all divided by x. This would be... x minus 3, or x minus 4, x minus 1. Whatever. Okay, if that are, uh, the way it was written originally could be factored and I just didn't realize it, like let me know tomorrow or next time you see me or something because I, I don't know, this, this seems off. I'm going to just go with it as it's written and I'm going to say that any place where, oh, okay, I found one thing that can cancel, and that would be an x. And so my discontinuities are going to be x equals 0, x equals 4, and x equals 1. Anytime the denominator is equal to 0, that causes a discontinuity. But 
if I have canceled it off, that's a removable discontinuity. So, so that would be x equals 0. And non-removable is going to be x equals 4 and x equals 1. Um, there's another function that I need to go look at. So what is that going to be? OK, b. And that's 8b. Okay, f equals 3x to the 3 plus 2x to the 2. That's, pardon me. I'm thinking a lot about piecewise functions, I guess. Is that, did I even copy from the right problem? Oh, yeah, 3x to the 3 plus 2x to the 2 divided by minus x. So I'm going to factor again. Okay, I'm going to have an x squared in the numerator times 3x plus 2 divided by 1 power of x times x minus 1. Which means that, okay, I can cancel off one of these powers of x with that. So there's a removable discontinuity at x equals 0. And there's a non-removable Specifically, it's a vertical asymptote, right? Because it's in the denominator after we've canceled everything we can cancel at, at x equals 1. The, okay, uh, the natural question here is, hey, what if there was two powers of x in the denominator, but only one in the numerator? That's something I need to tell you about. Okay. Okay, this is just an extra example, just in case you happen to be watching and curious about that one. Okay, if we have something like I'm going to just make up a function and I'm going to, I'm going to make it pretty straightforward. X times, how about X minus 5? Divided by X plus 1 and X minus 5 squared. Okay. It's like what if I had an, uh, like a redundant copy in the denominator, then what? Is it removable and non-removable? No, that does not make sense, right? So I'm going to cancel off this with one power. And after I've canceled, x equals 5 still causes division by 0. And specifically, it causes like 5 divided by 0, division by 0. And that's troublesome, right? That's evidence of a vertical asymptote. So I'm going to tell you, in this case, you have non-removable discontinuities at x equals negative 1 and at x equals 5, you know, with this example I just made up. Okay, and number nine, it's going to be the last one in this homework, is g is continuous with g of 0 equals 1 and g of 1 equals 0. One of the statements below could be false. Draw a picture to illustrate the case where the statement is false. OK, g of 0 is 1, and g of 1 is 0, and g is continuous. All right, so there is an h in the closed interval 0 to 1 with g of h equals 1 half. Oh, definitely. We have to cross over that if we're going to continuously go from 1 to 0. There is an h in 0, 1 with g of h equals 3 halves. I feel like that could be false because this is 1 and 3 halves is up here. Okay, so I don't, I don't know about that. Um, for all a and b in 0 to 1, if a equals b, then g of a equals g of b. Ooh, that's probably a little confusing to the first time calculus student. Okay, what that means is that g is a function. Okay, it passes the vertical line test. Um, that's, that's interesting. Um, and then for all x in 0 to 1, the limit of f is equal to f of h. That's what it means to be continuous. So yeah, that must be true. So one of the statements could be false. It's number two. And that would be false just in this case, right? It's a continuous function. It never hit 3 halves, okay? because it just went straight down. That is definitely a possibility. And there, I don't have any extra problems up for, for the continuity lesson. So I think that's going to be all for this video.